you know, in fact, like I like to start everything off with gratitude. I want to, I want to, I want to kick this off again and just say like, thank you to you guys. Like I'm happy to, to be on this podcast. Um, you guys support me in like so many different ways that probably means nothing to you, but means a lot to me. You know, I have a lot of, um, gratitude from God, my family, uh, my wife, Melissa, who puts in so much work in the back end and nobody knows about, you know, <laughs> yeah. um, and my kids, you know, um, but yeah, so that's kind of where I, where I, where I grew up and like how I came up and, you know, in, in that, in that situation. And I think for a lot of people in general, we don't get a lot of talk about, uh, financial education, right? Yeah. It's like, mm -hmm. no one even teaches you how to do your taxes, but you can go to jail for not doing your taxes, <laughs> right? You know, it's like, it's, it's wild, right? Um, and so, um, being that my mom didn't make a lot of money, we got a lot of stuff for free. And so after time goes by, I get into my career, I start making money. My wife, start, my wife makes money. And one day I'm driving after I picked up my kids and I was like thinking like, oh, wait, how much was the, um, the daycare bill? Oh, yeah, it's like three grand. And I was thinking like three thousand dollars a month. Crazy. Like, what? That's, that's, <laughs> what? Because yeah. you, you have two kids, right? I have two kids, Charlotte and Grayson. Gotcha. Um, six and four. And uh, yeah, and that's when it that's when it hit me like. Uh, when I was a kid, I got a lot of stuff for free. I got like very cheap school. I got, you know, like free lunch or whatever. And my kids aren't going to get any of that. No, <laughs> like <yeah>. Middle class, <laughs> homie. <laughs> <laughs> like, welcome. <laughs> Let's punch you right in the face. Um, yeah. And, that, and that's when it hit me. It's just like, I make too much money to get stuff for free, but I don't have enough money to actually pay for college for my kids. <laughs> Kids and like all this other stuff and I was just like man what am I gonna do and oh man I'm sorry give me like the long version no no please but, <laughs> but um I decided at that point like oh let me get my MBA and I wanted to go to the best I was gonna go to Wharton 200 grand 200 grand and I was just like yeah yeah and I'm, I'm yeah I'm a lot older than I look I think and then um because of that, like I had some friends who got their MBAs. They were like, man, like, I don't think you want that debt, man. Like you're, you're older. You don't want that debt at this age. And so I was like, what else can I do? And I just started like listening to investment podcasts and all these things. And of course I came across the, the big dog, you know, BP, bigger pockets. Oh, mm -hmm. And that's, that's when the floodgates opened, you know, it was like, I started listening to the podcast, listening to Josh's story, Brandon's story, um, getting into David and, and just, um, read, you know, of course, OG red bitch, that poor dad. And sure. Mm. That was it. It was just like, Oh, this is quite clear what I should do. And what year was that? That was 2018, mm -hmm. okay. 2018. Yeah. And yeah, that's what that's, you know, I talked to my, <laughs> My wife is a, she's a, a great barometer, right? She, I'm the guy who's like, you know, like I'm an ID on the disc, right? So I'm just like, yeah, let's go get him. I want to <laughs> do all this stuff. Yeah, it's going to be fun. And she's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you That's doing? how you make a good, good couple, right? Good pair. Cause like she, you, you're go, go, go. And she kind of like curves you back a little bit. Realistic. Oh, man, it's so good. I need it so badly. <laughs> <laughs> like I want to be skydiving and oh, yeah. motorcycles. She's like, no, no. And so, you know, I figured this much. If I could convince her that it would make sense for us to put our money and our time into real estate, then it's probably worth doing, right? Yeah. And so, I mean, when, when they talk about on, on BP, they're like, you know, you present things with, with intent, right? You come with like diagrams and plans and all the <laughs> numbers and all this stuff. And I did. I came to her like that and... And she went through it, and she was just like, oh, we, this might, there might be something here. You know, there might be something so here. So from 2018, right, you start reading it. How long till she was in? Well, less than a year. I would say maybe okay. three months. So okay. uh, I made a deal with her that she could give me the hard no if she read the book. If she read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and then decided, you know what? this is not the thing that we should be doing. Then I would just, you know, it, it's hard. It's so hard to do without support from your spouse that it's just like, yeah. 
it's, there would be no point. So take notes, people. <laughs> That's actually great. Like just read Rich Dad Poor Dad, and like if he can't convince you, then you know you got it. Right. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So that was that was um, how <clears throat> that was like the the kind of the seed to even get us into the space. And then of course, like I think a lot of people, we went into that um, that learning phase where we were reading. I mean, I was I was reading a lot of stuff and just kind of like her, you know, giving her the highlights, basically. Yeah. Um, so I read a ton of books, like all these books you guys have here. I read like all these books. Yeah, yeah, no, um, sure. And you know, being an ID, like I didn't want to. Like my nature is not to sit on information and not do something, and so I just I had to do something. And it was also terrifying because we were dipping into our four hundred one k to get a loan. And the plan was to give a loan to an investor who had a few steps ahead of us in one of their deals to kind of like get the lay of the land, right? That was the deal that I made with him, which is, you know, I'm going to give you the loan, but please let me do some of the work. Yeah. Like, I want to be able to go to the town and file for permits or pick out fixtures or whatever it is that you need me to do, I'll do it. And so that's that was like... That's how it started. So you got in as like a private investor and then you got a little bit more involved in the projects as well, kind of learning along the way as you also made money on your money. Yeah. Yeah. That's smart. Smart start. More, more to come after that. Yeah, yeah no, please. I, I want, I'm curious how that worked out. <laughs> I mean, that worked out uh, fairly well. Um, it was, he was busy enough to where I did actually have things that he needed me to do, which was good. I wasn't just like kind of sitting around like not doing anything um and yeah it was still terrifying like we made that loan 50k to a guy who i obsessively stalked him his friends his job <laughs> like I, I went to his house like I, I was like i need to know where you live i need to know what your kids look like because if anything goes wrong with this money i'm coming for you <laughs> <laughs> Find your kids. Yeah. hide your kids <laughs> I'm a man with a special set of skills. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it actually did went, it did went well. I think, you know, speaking to everybody who's listening, if you are thinking about getting into it and becoming an investor through learning, I liked it a lot because um, there was, there was not, little risk is not the right phrase, but there was less risk than, doing a, a lot of other different things, right? And so it was like, yes, I gave this man $50,000, but it was also connected to a piece of uh, uh, a house that I could go to. I physically yeah. knew it existed, yeah. right? I knew his name was, on, I knew all of the de the details. So it wasn't like, um, um, it wasn't like sketchy, right? It wasn't yeah. like this guy was going to like bounce mm -hmm. and move to Mexico or something. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know. Did you have a, an attorney like draft up the, the note when... Uh Kind of put that together. I didn't. He or just had, gave him like he, a case of cash. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Um, well, I'll tell a funny story about that too. But um, I, he had the notes already ready. I just had an attorney review them to mm -hmm. make sure that it was you know on my side as mm -hmm. well. It was protecting me. Yeah. Um, but the funny, the f <laughs> don't do this if you're an investor <laughs> receiving money. Um, we wired him the money. My, like, literally, my wife and I were holding hands as we, like, hit the, the button on <laughs> Bank of America. Like, please, God, let this money come back to us. Um, and we wired the money. And we told him, like, oh, we're going to wire the money. And we wired it. And then we were like, crickets. We're like, all right, so I guess he got the money. And then, like, we were like, yeah, I guess he got the money. And then hours go by, hours, you know, it goes into nighttime. We're like, this dude is not, he hasn't, you know, it's kind of like... <laughs> Yeah. We just literally sent fifty grand to someone who hasn't acknowledged that they received yeah. like nothing. You know, it's just like, did he already leave for Mexico? Like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> so that was a um, that was an interesting moment. But he, we, yeah, we called him. And he was just like, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was like, yeah, man, sorry. You might want <laughs> to bad wanna start. Understand. Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> and yeah. Prince, you don't mind me asking, how did you find this guy that you were going to give fifty thousand dollars to? Yes, I forgot. I took, that's a great question. Great question. So the way that I, oh, this is so good. The way that I found him is I did what you did. I did what a lot of people should do. 
And I was super excited about real estate. I'm a real estate nerd at this point. Like I love talking about it. Is it Craigslist? <laughs> Nope. <laughs> I went behind a store at Home Depot <laughs> and was asking for it. Uh, yeah, so I just, uh, I looked for uh, meetup groups. I found some. They were all super whack. I mean, they were like, let me sell you this. Let me sell you that. I'm just like, is anyone actually teaching or learning anything here? It's like, no, we just sell That's things selling. to each other. I'm like, uh, okay, well. And so I started my own. I started my own in my town. Um and yeah, he, he came and a lot of other people came, a lot of other people got interested and I met my attorney, good friend, partner, the same attorney who looked at the deal. Like this guy, I'll, I'll just say his name, Yale. <laughs> Yale yeah. is like amazing. Um, he, he did the, the deal between us. Yeah. Like Yale. Is, I spoke with him, man. It was good. And I would have never met him if. I never put that together. Like similar, I didn't know you, your story until I, I listened to the podcast and I was like. Yeah, I met Ryan. <laughs> yeah, through, uh, I started my own meetup. I wanted to buy in Staten Island first to house hacks. So I was like, right. you know what? Like, let me just, let me just start my own meetup. Same thing. And two people showed up and Ryan just happened to be one of them. And then he's the only one that kept showing up every month. Little did I know that he just like quit <laughs> and he was just like trying to like figure this out as well. So then, um, yeah, right. And then you guys were flipping Bryant. Mm -hmm. um, it was uh, the Red Bank property. Red Bank. I met him. I met him on Bigger Pockets too. I met oh. Ryan on Bigger Pockets. Yeah, there Pockets. it is. Like through the forums? Through the forums, yeah. Wow. Messages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a good resource. It's crazy. You need a lot of people there. And then yeah. we met through the meetup that was posted exactly. on Bigger Pockets. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, Small world. Small yeah. World. Well, I think I think beyond that, it's just like one thing that I think I've heard on somewhere out there in the world of all the stuff that I read and take in is like stickability, right? I don't remember who coined that phrase, but um, at the end of the day, it's the people who continuously show up and also take action who are moving forward, right? I still have people that I started that group with that I started who are still liter literally who are still coming to me like, you know, like, I really want to, when I saw you do your first deal, I was like, this guy is crazy. And then he's just like, and then the same guy is like, oh, but I, I want to do a deal now. I want to get on a deal. I'm like, man, it's been, it's been like, what have you been doing this whole time? You know, like, I, I want to help you. I want to see you move forward too, just like I did. And I think what happens is, you know, no, um, no slight to him. I think just what happens is some people who are very good with numbers, where like they, they look at spreadsheets and they salivate. I think those are some of the people who tend to get held back by those same numbers, right? It's yep. like when those numbers don't look like they're going to work out on, on the spreadsheet, then it's just like, okay. Talk yeah, analysis out. paralysis. Yeah, right. it is. Yeah. Right. And it happens, you know, and I, I just my personality doesn't allow for it. And in, in a way that, like you said, it's good to have my wife on the other side of the scale to mm -hmm. say, like, hey, maybe you shouldn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a balance, right? Like the uh, the e-myth, right? It's like you have the dreamer, right? And then you have, like, the manager, right? So it seems like maybe your wife is more on the managerial side where she can manage all these things that you're doing. But you also need a dreamer, right? Like to keep pushing forward, keep reaching for that North Star, Cause um just to piggyback, cause I don't want you to pass it, but like for analysis paralysis and excuses, right? Like you have a full time job, yes. You have a wife, right? Kids. You have two kids, right, right? Right, right. And you're still investing, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So I want to make sure everyone knows that, like there They're are not no passively, yeah, yeah. There are no excuses, right? There, there are no excuses, and. And I see people who have more on their plate than me, and they still, you know, at least from the outside looking in, seem to have it all together. And I'm just, like, in awe all the time, just, like, in awe. I mean, I think there's also um, – you have to be – in, not have to be. It works a lot better when you live anything in, in your life with intent, right? If you choose to do – some people do things, they fall into it, they get into it, they – they're told that they have to do the thing, whatever, by their parents or whatever. And it's just like they float by and just whatever happens, happens. For me, it's like I choose to have all of these things in my <laughs> life, but it isn't easy. And, like, I wanted to, like, bring up a tip for people out there who I hear a lot of people talk about, like, right, like, how do I do that? Like, how can I manage all of these things? It, so it sounds crazy, right? Um, 
for me, one of the things that helped me, I actually got this tip from my uh, business coach at Entre Results. Uh, he said, if you just time block the very important things, the critical things, like if I think you went through this exercise with Ryan where it was just like you identify the critical things in your life, mm -hmm. right? Time block those things. Let all of the rest of the stuff like happen around it, but don't like, protect those things mm -hmm. with like everything you have. It's like, so nothing could mess with my time with my wife. Like I take a day off every month just to spend the day with my wife while the kids are at daycare, school, whatever. Um, nothing can take away my Sundays to uh, worship God. And nothing's going to take away my Thursday night business meetings with my best friend, Marcus, that, that jazz club owner I was talking about, room 623. Um, and Wednesdays is with my wife. We also have a, a meeting. And then Tuesdays, I have a meeting with my GC. And then Mondays is like my real estate um, kind of like catch all, like do all the things that I haven't done for the for the past week. Right. And so but those those nights like Friday is open, Saturday is open, Sunday night is open. I could do whatever I want during those nights. Yep. But those other nights, you can't touch that. What do those days look like? Uh, let's like break it down. Like so Monday's real estate. What's that look like? The real estate portion is. Like me trying to figure out like all the things that I need to do and make sure that they're getting done. Right. I, I, I try to keep the perspective. Um, I, I, I know that we are all kind of not all, but at least some of us, myself, speak for myself. Like I was kind of born on that, that BP life. Right. Yeah. And so like a lot of stuff that I say is going to come from there. So <laughs> I don't want to sound like a commercial. No, but, no, you're good. Um, but the men's right. I look at the most important next step because that is something that keeps me from feeling overwhelmed. It's like I literally just closed, thanks to the help of a bunch of you yeah. <laughs> from the team, closed on another three family last week, and it's like... Nice. nice. <laughs> is that the thing? Yeah. That I got sick of that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and, and so... Uh, if I, if I step back from it and I'm like, man, this thing cost me double what the three family I bought you know, two years ago and the rent is like not as good and the mortgage is higher and this has to get done and the foundation and the electrical, it can feel overwhelming. But when I look at it and I just say, okay, what do I have to do today? <laughs> like, what what do I have it. to do next to yeah. just keep this thing moving forward properly? And I just do that thing. So that's my Monday. Gotcha. <laughs> so you're prioritizing what most the, what the most important next step is for you and your business. And then you'll take it from there. Definitely. Um, yes. And I also try to not get caught up with just working in the business. Like I also try to take some time. Usually it'll be an off day retreat to work on the business. Like, how am I going to do this stuff better? Who can I hire to do some of this stuff, which I'm actually looking into right now. What are you um, trying, what are you trying to do in terms of hiring? So I went through, <laughs> this is like that learning curve, right? But I went through, um, trying to hire a VA out in the Philippines. Uh, I think I was looking in Venezuela as well. And I went through, I mean, like I went through a, a deep process, right? Where I was like looking for somebody, and what I realized is that I did, I had all these things that I wanted to get off my plate, but I hadn't put them in a way that they were, I was able to delegate them. It would just be like, <laughs> here's the mess that I have to deal with. You go do it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it doesn't work that way. Nope. I tried it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's like One thing with VA is like, they need direct direction. Like if you yeah. don't tell them exactly what it is, especially from the start, right? Because they never yeah. worked with you before. They don't know what your process is and right. how you think. So you got to start simple and like, you know, okay, these are the steps. This is what I need done. First of all, these are the, the steps and not overwhelm them. A lot of people have like problems like working with VAs is like they think they're just little magical people, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> you give them whatever and they'll get it done. That's not the case. They're just normal people and they specialize in just one thing. And, you know, especially from start, right? Start with that one thing. Yeah. Go from there. That, that was another key thing that I didn't, I didn't consider or maybe know about. I don't know, but they do specialize in things. Like yeah. you can't just hand. Well, I didn't have success in trying to hand a VA like, okay, do this bookkeeping. Okay, now do this like mm -hmm. acquisition work. Okay, now do <laughs> this like property management work. It's like, and there's things that they like and don't like too. Oh, sure. That right? 
that's 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 what took us to the next level. It's like really investing in them and like, oh, like they'll do it if we ask. But if I like if we notice, I'm like, Ernie doesn't like being on the phone but man if we give her some spreadsheets to create mm. and to like record a bunch of kpis she's she'll do it with no problem and we have another guy like marvin i've never heard his voice what? ever right what? have, have I you think so no well yeah, i've never heard either. his voice I'm, I'm sh- i know he exists <laughs> unless ernie is like <laughs> no, he exists he yeah. exists right but what i'm saying is like it's that idea like kind of Honing in on their strengths, but like, and then there's also that gap because they've had maybe negative experiences. So maybe they don't, they're scared to tell you what those things are. So it's Mm -hmm. like, it's important that we kind of take lead and like really hone in on like, okay, they seem, you know, seems to like this, uh, you know, seems reluctant to do this and kind of like put them in positions of success. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, I learned that lesson (laughs) the first go around. And now I'm, I'm, I'm starting over in the sense of I'm, when I say I'm, I'm looking to hire someone, I don't mean my, my, my men's is to create those, um, those SOPs, like yeah. the, the, first of all, create a JD, create a job description and create the standard operating procedures so that I literally have something to give someone that's not like just a notebook full of like random notes <laughs> of stuff to do, you yeah. know? No, for sure. I feel like it comes back to having a system. Like you said, like once you have that system in yeah. place, you can implement the people who are best suited for that system. Like somebody like you and your wife, you have different like skill sets. So you can kind of go towards which side of the business makes most sense for you. And then she's more on the back end, which is kind of like cleaning up whatever, you know, I don't know, whatever you're doing, but it kind of, that's how I kind of see it. Definitely. And that's actually, that's one of the first places where it played out, where it was just like some, at some points I was getting overwhelmed because my wife does like a, a ton of the, the work at home. Like she's like managing the kids' schedules and like managing our trips. Like I, <laughs> my brother asked me today, it's like, you know, I'm coming there in a month. I'm like, I don't, Melissa does all that. I don't really know when <laughs> you're coming. <laughs> but, um, and so I was feeling a bit overwhelmed on the real estate side of things. And I was like, man, like if you, if you just happen to have time, can you help me out with this thing? And I tried to give it to her and I realized like, she doesn't have any clue. She doesn't know anything about that because she doesn't have to. Right. And it's mm-hmm. like, I can't just t- ask her to do something. She has no basis of there's just like nowhere to start. So yeah. Yeah, I have to make those SOPs if I want to delegate. No, it makes sense. So that's that's your Monday. Oh, right. <laughs> it's a long Monday. <laughs> that's a crazy Monday. <laughs> Tuesday's your GC. Tuesday's a GC. That that <laughs> tends to be a, a, a quick a quicker uh, situation just because it's just really updates, you know. You know, we had this conversation before yeah. about GCs. I mean, I think everybody in the business talks about GCs. <laughs> like, I, I, I want to get Jay's opinion on some of this stuff around, like, project management and whatnot. Yeah. But um, I think it's just, it kind of just, the easiest way to put it is it goes back to, like, uh, an amazing baker does not make for it and a great, uh, 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 an amazing bakery owner, right? Yeah. Like, just because you can make cakes doesn't mean you can market and sell them and do all the stuff around it correct but, um so he's he's amazing his team is amazing um but uh when it comes to like momentum i just feel like i could just hire someone to just literally take that call over for me to just ask i think it's it's often that uh, i'll speak for him i don't know about other i'm sure other gcs have this but he has so many jobs that it's like you know, which one am I going to focus on today? So I pick and choose is not necessarily a prioritization, right? Um, and so often it's just like just being the squeaky wheel that I think gets things moving forward. So it doesn't even have to be like some detailed like, you know, let's get into all the weeds of everything. It's just more like, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to move forward. Yeah. How can we get it done? And yeah. So Tuesday's easy. Yeah, I mean, from the conversations that I think I feel like me and you're talking to Jay more and more about project management, just being on the acquisition side, just I think it's just a just blends in, especially with property management as well. And he I don't I don't I don't know if he he deals with the same thing. I know one thing that he hones in on is just like it's funny follow ups. Like, right. Exactly. Like similar to what you're saying, like it's just, you know, if if they're if there's if they have a gr- you know they're great at managing pro like maybe working projects working the guys in the project but maybe on the back end maybe not scheduling like is once again same thing with the VAs right it's just like 
okay, finding that weakness right away and then like helping that person overcome that weakness and just like, oh, you just like being in the projects? Let me see if I can coordinate for you to do just that. <laughs> and then like, I'll be your backup to get the materials over there and stuff like that. Like I know with Jose, it was something similar with Seth, like Seth. And that's another thing too, right? You could talk about that, right? Like also them finding value in what you bring mm -hmm. also plays a major part, right? Like Seth loves us, right? Because it's exactly what he was looking for. So he sees the value that we provide. And in return, we're like, this guy's a rock star. <laughs> like this, this, you know, we see the value in him. So like we spoke about that, but like, that's the other side, like finding something that like they see the value in you as an investor to bring more projects. And then you see the value in them. Like these, this guy gets it done. Right. And I think he sees the value in me as far as um, the relationship side of things. But from the business side of things, I don't think he realizes how much I could help his business just from a processes perspective, right? Um, but but maybe he doesn't even want that, right? I think uh, some of these guys, uh, they like status quo. If it works, it works. You know, it's, it's not broken, right? It, they, he's making money, so he can make more money, but he doesn't need to, right? So <laughs> you know. that's a that's a good point, Prince. Like his north star. Like what is like his goal? Like how did you? I guess, figure that out with him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, does he see the value that you could bring to him with the business or it's like, that's not important to him? That's a good question. You know, so yeah, being that guy who wants to like, really, I like connecting with people. Like I really like connecting with, that's like probably like one of the things that motivates me the most. In fact, um, relationships is on my list is like a win uh, in my book. Um, that being said, you know, English is his second language. And sometimes I, I wonder, like, is there literally a communication barrier between us? And so because of that, I was like, I'm just going to learn Spanish, you know? So I, now when we do our calls, we do them in Spanish just because I'm like, I'm not fucking around. Like, I want to, <laughs> I really want to, oh, I really want to, like, be able to communicate to you. Like, if I say something's on fire, we both need to realize, like, this thing's on fire. We yeah. need to move, right? <laughs> it can't just be like, you nod your head because you don't want to like have friction and you, you just say yes or to whatever. It's like, no, we need to be on the same page here. Bro. Uh, that's I real mean, commitment right yeah, there. Yeah. That's like Spanish just to speak with your GC. That's si, love por que no. Yeah. yeah, there it is. Si. That's extreme ownership too, right? It's like the reason why you guys aren't gelling, right? It's your fault, right? Taking ownership of it, right? Yes, allows sir. you to empower yourself, right? Like let me, I'm going to learn Spanish and then that's, we're going to remove that barrier. So, uh, I mean, that's le legit extreme ownership. <laughs> No, that's awesome. Yeah, that is. So, all right, so that's Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesdays is now for the wife. Yeah, so I feel it, like we need to go faster. I'll talk, no, I'll no, less, no, no, no. This is fun. <laughs> um, right. So this is this is super important to me. This is like again one of those things I don't mess around with. Um, Wednesdays is a business meeting between my wife and I. Well, the business of the house, right? And so it's not always necessarily about real estate or about money, even though we call it lovingly married money time. <laughs> um, uh, but sometimes it's about scheduling. Sometimes it's about, um, you know, it could be anything. It literally friends. Help. It's just our time to like kind of what, what I've learned. And maybe I, I pulled this in from like one of the, hundreds of books whatever right that i'll talk about i feel like do you guys always feel like these books say literally the same things mm -hmm. but in different ways yeah <laughs> it's yeah just like the same story it's like For a confirmation sometimes yeah and sometimes you need to hear it a different way right especially right. when you're in a different time in your life that's like yes. something ronnie always talks about with me like yeah. when you read a book from when you started and then you reread it now you're just going to take away different nuggets from them because of your experiences right yeah so for me, one of them is, I think it's four hour work week, uh, or maybe it's the one thing, I don't know, anyways. Um, but it's the idea of like setting a time, setting aside a specific time to do things so that you can literally forget about it every other moment. Oh, uh, that's four hour work week. Four hour work. Yeah, to deal with it right away so you can keep it moving. Well, I would say for, for us, it's scheduled. So it's yeah. not, it's, it's maybe it's even the opposite of right away in the sense of like, there are times when she, it, it's so easy to off the cuff say things to people that leads into a longer conversation that you don't necessarily need to have at that moment. If I'm, I'm trying to think of an example, but there could be something like my brother's coming into town, right? And she could start talking to me about that 
tonight, which is Thursday, which she can't because I'm in other meetings. But um, <laughs> but if she just started talking to me about that in the car and we could be talking about something else, I'm like, you know what? Let's talk about it, that on Wednesday because that is not urgent. We don't need to talk about that right this second, right? I think the, 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 the next one is maybe re-signing the tenants who are in the house and in the three family we just closed on. And we started kind of getting into it. And I was like, you know what? Let's not do that right now. We could spend this time like relaxing, watch TV. We could talk about anything else. Let's save that for Wednesday when we have, when we set aside time to deal with it. And so being intentional again, like I, I think I started this conversation off with intent and, um, that's, that's made life a lot easier for me, at least like, yeah having these blocks where it's just like, I know that that's when I have to focus on this thing. And if it's outside of that space, if it's not on fire, I don't have to think about it. It's like so good. Yeah. <laughs> that's a no, great point. Yeah, man. No, I was going to say like, that's, I mean, I'm taking, I'm, I'm, I should, I'm thinking like I should definitely start doing that more because I guess for me personally too, sometimes like if I'm driving back to that example and someone tells me something like I'm like, if I'm not like, I, I can't do more than one thing. Like, and really focus on this. So, if, like, Jagger, if I'm driving, Jagger's telling me about this, like, house. I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, But I'm really not listening. Mm. As, right? So, like, it's also for me that, too. Like, as opposed to Wednesday where I'm like, I'm here to talk to Jagger about this house. And I'm giving him all my attention because I kind of put time away for that. So, I really like that. No, yeah. And I think that's how you can do something long term. Like we always talk about, like, how can you do something forever? It's by like making it as easy as possible. And um, it goes back to one of the books I read, Atomic Habits, where you make the easy habits easier. You put those things in front of you. You make the more difficult ones more difficult for you to do. Like you, you want to quit smoking? Don't have a pack of cigarettes in your house. But like your point of like, hey, like me and my wife don't get to spend as much quality time as we want. Let's use this time exactly. for enjoying it. Exactly. So then later I'm going to have a business meeting anyway. Let's leave that for then. I think that's a that's, that's a great gold, tip for everybody bro. listening. You took the words right out. That's exactly mm -hmm. it. That's exactly it. Sum that up for you real quick. <laughs> oh, that's that's gold. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. That was fantastic. <laughs> All right, so then now you're free. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. No, Thursday is more meeting. I got Sorry, meetings tonight. with your buddy. Yeah. Yes. Right. This is great. This is really great. This is another tip that hopefully people can use and take it and run with it. Um, I've been searching for a mastermind for a while now. And then one day I realized that I'm in one. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it's just something that I started. Um, well, I, I don't know if masterminds need a, a technical number of people. It's just me and my best friend, right? Um, but the interesting thing is that he does, he, he, well, he actually does have a rental, which is next door to him, um, uh, apartments, right? Uh, but he's not a real estate guy. Like, that's not his bag, right? He's a musician. He loves music. He loves creating music. And I'm a real estate guy. I'm an IT guy. I'm a tech guy. And like, I love that stuff. And I could geek out about it forever. The wildest thing happened. We just started realizing at some point, like we would talk casually, right. About the challenges in his uh, managing the jazz club. And I would talk casually about trying to do things in real estate. And like s some of these things are like the same. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of weird. Right. And then we're like, you know, you always give me really good insight when we talk about it. He's like, yeah, I feel like you do the same thing. <laughs> and you're like, what if we just met every week and just, just to test it, just to see what happens. If we met every week, if we would feel like we were improving upon each other's businesses, right? And we did it. I think we started last year. And the only rules were... Um, What's that word um, when you presence, right? It's uh, present when you, when you're like, present, like be present, be present. Yeah. Um, and, and that's it. And show up, show up. Sorry. Yeah. Show up and then be present for one hour once a week. There were no other like what we would talk about or anything. And we just got into it. And it would, it's great. It's like the person that I'm considering hiring after I get I actually owe him a JD tonight. It's that's also awesome. It's oh, man, it's so good it's so good it's so good accountability oh it's so good that word <laughs> it's so good in fact i wrote down accountability and integrity and those are the things that that like make me me and then i looked up when i was looking at you and i was like well it's, well, part, well. Of <laughs> 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 it's part of the freedom home buyers yes, core values yes. like, um but yeah so having that accountability i think 
anybody can create that with somebody else. You don't have to be in the same business. You don't even have to, like, it, it could be someone who's not even doing business. It's just like literally having someone that can run stuff, you know, you can run stuff with and just like talk about things. And hopefully they have some, something, you know, some intelligence, some experience, something to bring to the table. But we've had, we've had so much of an effect on each other's businesses that it is wild. And so that, that's actually the, the, um, that actually, (laughs) it's kind of funny that kicked off the meeting with my wife. It actually started with my best friend on Thursdays. And then I was like, I should be doing this with my wife. (laughs) And then it moved into, yeah. So his meeting is called money time, our meeting. And then with my wife, it's called married money time. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And okay. So then now Thursday, that's the, now. Oh, and Thursday (laughs) night. Okay. So after the meeting, after that meeting at night, there's all, by the way, all of this is like you said, is after my W2 stuff. That's a whole other bag. Right. But then after that, I also have Thursdays evening, like late evening for this. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah. So, um, uh, I started, uh, well, I co co-founded, I guess, a start, a start, a scotch. I've had too much. (laughs) Um, I inspired the, the founding of a scotch group in my town. And so, Thursday nights, we call it Thirsty Thursday, like I guess it's called across the world. Yeah. And, um, you know, we'll have a, a lots or a few bottles of scotch. Wow, that's pretty <laughs> cool. Especially like when you're like running around. It's important to like, I hate that. Like, I feel like my parents used to do this, but you have to schedule fun time. You do. Like. Mm-hmm. Or else it won't happen. You would just go with the motions and then you're like, why am I miserable? And mm-hmm. it's like, you didn't schedule any fun time now that like you got kids and stuff like your schedule could get jam packed. So, so yeah. yeah, it sounds like to me, Prince, you kind of integrated a lot of this stuff in your life, like real estate, work, family, friends, like all of this kind of into one where now you can kind of just make it like a part of your day to day. Yeah. And just hearing you say that out loud reminded me of like and and thinking about what you said earlier about the uh, my GC, the North Star, right? And for me, I I mean, like, I take a lot of the stuff to heart that I read, and I think, and, and that people say, like, when I talk to you guys and you tell me something, like, I take that seriously, you know? And for me, taking it seriously means doing something with it, right? Not just hearing it and just putting it to the side, like, oh, that was a good thing to hear. Like, no, I actually want to, like, turn this into some fruit so I can show it to you guys and say, or show it to whoever, show it to my wife, to my kids, and say, like, I did this thing, you know? And so for me, uh, my North Star is my vivid vision. So I did actually go and and, and create a vivid vision um, for myself in conjunction with my wife. So my wife and I have a retreat that we do um, once a year. It's actually coming up uh, this month um, where we either are setting our vivid vision or we're looking at what we wrote and seeing how we're doing, right, and being intentional about moving forward in it. And so for me, I use the five Fs because it's easy for me to remember, right, faith, friends, family, finances, and fitness. So those are your five? Those are the five. And then if anything in your life isn't on those five? It makes it easier to say no to it. (laughs) Yeah, that's similar to what me and you kind of always talk about, like, you know, yeah. friends, family, real estate, fitness, like exactly. very similar, same thing. It just makes like that has nothing to do with it. I can easily say exactly. no. <laughs> yeah, if you're feeling no half so and half, <laughs> if you're feeling one way, it's like, oh, it's not hitting the five apps. Yeah. I can't do it. Yes, <laughs> and I bet Michael has something similar for himself as well. Well, it's something, yeah, very similar. Basically just health, wealth, love, and happiness, right? Just having mm. having those four that is integrating into your life, right? Like if it's not part of that, then uh, easy to say no to. That's good. Yeah. I think having anything that makes it easier for you to say no to things is just in general helpful. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like real estate, right? Like chasing the shiny ball, right? Like that's like a big thing. Like how did you choose like which route to go first? Like, I don't even know what was your first project. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's jump into a deal. Deep dive. Yeah. Wait a <laughs> second. Let's go into a deal. Deep dive. First deal. Talk to me. Well, I don't know. I guess uh, deal 1.0 was uh, the investing uh, the 50 K okay. with the other guy. Um, and yeah, I, le- I learned a, a bit um, and I got a lot of resources from him. That was super important um, or super helpful. 
um, the first deal that I managed, I was also, a, I was partnered with the same guy, but I was the managing partner at this point, and he just found the deal, right? And so I had to get it done with some guardrails. Um, and so how, how, like how much specific? How, let's, how, let's dig in. <laughs> Well, this is where my the transparency um, in my personality will come through. So I'll start off by saying I lost money. Okay. <laughs> um, um, and, uh, but it was like, I mean, uh, especially compared to the 200K I was prepared to spend <laughs> on an MBA, easiest, like, tuition that I've ever paid, right? And so um, this was 105 Summit Cross in Rutherford. Um super old house oh man i, I should have been pre- better prepared i don't remember all the details on it i think it was like maybe it was like one of those houses where they do sketchy things and then you ever see a bathroom legitimately under the stairs <laughs> like, no un- but yeah. we've seen what yeah like also like harry potter style like <laughs> <laughs> like staircase like this like you have to somehow get i, I couldn't go in i i would i could stand inside the front i've part. seen it once i know you're talking about bizarre <laughs> so, so. yeah not normal like not they said it's a full bath it's like it's not it's, it's not, not a not full bath, full bath. <laughs> <laughs> right? i mean like how much how much more do you want for this bathroom you got to be under stairs? five seven to get in so it's like yeah <laughs> right um so it was that kind of house right so there was an old house i think it was like 1910 or something super old um, foundation was like literally stones like big old stones that were mason together um and so we walk in and you know <laughs> i don't know anything about construction or cost of that st- you know like then the analytical stuff from my tech background um was easier for me like i literally hit my arv like i think it was like legit literal like arv i, I hit it um and like you know, no, understanding that related to the acquisition, it was just like, okay, so this is what the number needs to be for rehab. Great. Um, my partner, um, he missed that. <laughs> he, he he missed the um, the 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 rehab number, and, and which I guess is kind of typical. Um, it was something that I was hoping to avoid because he'd been around a couple of years longer than than I have. Um, yeah, but uh, quick question before you jump past that: How did he? Was he the one that's doing the contract? Like, is he doing the contracting? Like, how did he figure out what the renovation was? And then, like, how far off was he? Yeah, so I don't know. I I don't really know where he got the number from, gotcha. right? And I didn't know any better to even ask where he was getting it from. I didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't just know. trusted him to to know what it's supposed to be. Hey, I mean, his money was going to be in it, too. I had way more money than him in it, but he had the upside to get, too, right? 50% equity. So I'm like, uh, and he's had the, the experience. So I'm like, okay, so I get, if he says that's the number, I think it was uh, 150 he said it was going to cost. The okay. reno? Oh, no, no. So it was one, yeah, uh, the reno. It was 120 Yeah, it was 120 Oh, so that, we're talking, like, that's a pretty, like, heavy renovation. Oh, we had to gut the whole thing. Yeah, we that was, building. like, Adams and um, Livingston. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, and, and this was your first project, you said. <laughs> <laughs> was your wife on board? I mean, you know, you don't know what you don't know, and she didn't necessarily understand, probably just as much as I didn't, like, what we were actually taking... Getting on yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> like, there are certain times I'd walk in, I'd be like, there's literally... Everything's <laughs> gone. <laughs> like, there's nothing here. Um, and so... Yeah, the other thing was is it was uh, a hoarder house, and so there was, like, more stuff. I, you're literally, like, walking on, like, piles and bags of CDs and clothes and all that. I'm sure you guys have seen all that yeah, before. Sure. Um, and we had this, this grand vision, and we were going to make it happen. So, um, uh, yeah, so we bought it for three, I think it was... 325 it was like low threes um the rehab was gonna be i think uh just over 100 okay and the arv was gonna be 660 okay so i'm thinking like okay this is pretty good you know we'll probably make uh you know 
I don't know, like, I don't remember what the number was, like 50 grand split that two ways or something after everything's said and done. Um, But then the rehab started. (laughs) Actually, even before that, okay, one thing I want to say who people who are just starting is like, demolition costs way more than you might think. Dumpsters, right? Yeah. <laughs> Especially in a hoarder like, house. I thought dumpsters right away. Dude. That's like four or five of them right yeah, there. Yeah, off the bat. Yeah. 700 a container. Yep. And you got to fill up like six. I'm like, mm-hmm. what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> like, and then the, you got to pay these guys their day rates to do it, right? My man. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> a couple hundred bucks a day. Yeah. Two, let's say three, four guys, uh, you know, average out somewhere in the hundreds per day, 200 a day. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> I. I, it was already one of those things where I was just like, what have I just done? What, what is happening right now? Because I'm thinking like, okay, like maybe four, like in the budget, like we did hard money. So we had to present a budget and we said like, okay, I forget what the number is exactly, but it was like, okay, five containers and then blah, blah, blah. When we were hit like six and seven, I was just like, guys, <laughs> like what is ha- literally what is happening right now? I don't understand. And then they charge you overages for the tonnage. And I'm just like, we just started <laughs> not a good start so you hit a few thousand dollars on the reno before you even started renovating basically yeah it was like now i know i mean every everything in real estate is a story and a lesson right and Mm -hmm. one of one of the lessons that i learned from that is like room swept and clean my man otherwise i need to add some money to that you know take off some money on that on that um offer because People, sellers are like, oh, you just throw this stuff out. <laughs> you <laughs> throw it out. <laughs> exactly, right, exactly, you do it. Imagine t- taking this stuff down out to the curb, right? Like piles of <laughs> yeah. giant mountains of stuff. That's one thing that I've learned. Like, I guess, well, Jason Hammers, he's our project manager. Jay hammers it to me and Jagger especially. Like, everything that you envision has a dollar amount to it. Hell yeah. Every single, like, it's yes, not sir. just move this toilet from here to here. No. There's a price to move that toilet from there to there, right? Yep. Like, same thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, basically, I guess the, I don't know, but we, we, we I don't know how, what, where you want to go next, but basically, we, we basically got all the renovation done, and we were clearly way over. I think it was at 180. Um, so, we were way over, um, but thank God, like, we, we actually hit, that 660 because it allowed us to, I think we lost um, maybe around under 10 K each. Um, it was an interesting there too, because the realtor was just like, you're, you're not going to hit that number. And I was just like, yes, we are. <laughs> no, we better. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. Did you have multiple extra strategies for your, for this deal? Nope. Did not. Nope. That's another, I mean, I think it's a lesson that I'm still kind of um, learning, you know, like, <sighs> I don't think it's COVID time, you know, like how time got all warped in COVID. I think it's just, maybe it's real estate time, but I feel like I've like have all these battle scars. Like I've been through a lot and I was literally prepping for this and I was just like, Oh wait, I literally have only, I've only done been a part of not even managed, been a part of three flip deals. Right. So I didn't even complete all of them. Um, and I've only, I've only have two rentals, but it, and I have, well, I have also two flips in progress right now, but it just feels like it's way more. <laughs> I'm just like, it feels like I feel like I'm missing something, but I'm not. <laughs> Cause you're, you're around a lot of real estate investors too. And you're hearing stories and you understand like the good and the bad from other people. And it kind of goes into your own repertoire of like, mm. you know, experiences in a way, right? Like you come to the meetups on a, what monthly basis yeah. and you hear what we say, what other investors say, and it becomes part of you in a, w- in a sense. For sure. For sure. And I think that's an important thing. And one of the things that is so valuable about networking in general, like however you need to do it, right. If, if it's going to a meetup, if it's going to, uh, uh, what do they call those? Like uh, when you go fly somewhere and you sit in a room and conferences, people, conferences yeah. and yeah. seminars, <laughs> seminars, yeah. however <laughs> you have to get it, as long as it's like not, just like a sales pitch or whatever, but, um, or if it's zoom meeting, whatever it is, I think it's just super important because then you can avoid like all the mistakes. You can try to avoid all of the mistakes that other people made by hearing their stories. Right. 
So it's, it's super important. Yeah, like when you share the things that didn't go well with, you know, your rehab back like over a year ago when we were back in Bryan Street, right? Yeah. Like we learned from that too. Like it's not just what to do. It's also, like you said, what not to do. And yeah. you kind of prevent those mistakes from kind of happening in your own projects or whatnot. For sure, for sure. And, and some of them, you know, you just got to, I mean, there's always going to be something, mm -hmm. right? There's no like, I mean, I've never heard of a story where someone's just like, I just went in and painted the walls and buffed the floor. And yeah, we made like 40 grand. It was great. <laughs> Even on a project we did on uh, in Piscataway on Grand Street, Grand Avenue, I walked in the house. I was like, nothing needs to be done. I was like, I was like, this is like as clear cut as it That's gets. Already and already a, um, a scary start. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, we ended up spending like ten thousand or fifteen thousand okay. on it. And, and don't get me wrong, like a lot less than we usually do. Our average budget's like seven. Yeah, that was a whole tale. Yeah, and with okay. the whole tale, like we didn't even have to renovate it, but there's still always something. We had to take off a few of the cabinets. We had to fix something in the bathroom downstairs. And then, like, if you're not going to do anything, it still costed ten grand. Where exactly? It's never as clear cut as you. I guess. What's expect. a whole tale? A hotel is where you basically buy a property and you don't really do too much to it and then throw it back on the market. Gotcha. Yeah, especially if you're selling it to an end buyer, right? There's exactly. attorneys involved. There's other people involved. Like, even if you think the house is perfect, they're going to find something. Even in new construction, right? You come in, with new, newly built. They're going to come in and say, this is not perfect. I got I need money back or whatever it is. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. I think it, it, um, one of the things that my first partner... Um, tried to instill in me that I'm, I'm getting to really embody that lesson today is something that you said that Jay said, which is like literally everything, everything mm -hmm. costs money. Oh wait, you want, you want black hinges instead of the standard like brushed whatever nickel, that's probably going to be an extra, um, a dollar a hinge. And then some, it's easy to think like oh, a dollar a hinge. All right. So what? Oh, well, you got like 200 <laughs> inches in this. Like, it adds up. You know, it's, it's like, you, it's easy to think like these these little increases are okay, but when you put them all together at the end of a $100,000, you know, renovation, how much could you have saved by just like keeping things simple and not moving the toilet, right? Yeah. For sure. Oh, Qu sure. Quick question. Uh, I guess more it's present. So when you walk a property now, I know you have a lot more experience with some of the... Uh, maybe bad experience you've had with the renovations. Do you bring a contractor with you? Do you have enough experience where you can kind of eye what a good renovation is going to be like? How does that work for you? I, a little bit of both. Um, so I always take the first pass. Like I don't want to waste my contractor's time. Right. Um, I take video. I'll FaceTime him while I'm at the property. If I really want to ask him a specific question, but at this point I, I have a good idea. Like, if I see an issue, if I see a foundation issue, if I know the roof needs to be replaced, I have a good idea of how much it's going to cost and, and you know how much time it's going to take. Um, but then I always want him to come back after I've committed to, you know, after I ran, ran my numbers based on what I think and just make sure, right, if, it, if it's something I'm going to move forward on, not, if it, not every deal, right, but if it's something I think I'm going to move forward on, I want him to come back just to make sure, like, because he, you know, we all, all of us experienced this during COVID, like the price of copper, like tripled or whatever. Yeah. Right. And so you think like, Oh, I just, you know, re replace these outlets or update this panel. It's going to cost what it cost me last year. No negative. <laughs> so yeah. it's, you know, it's good to make sure that the numbers are up to date. So you're always confirming with like an expert in that field when you're actually going to put X amount of money into this or really take that next step. hundred percent. And, yeah. and, I need to, in the sense of, well, at least from the flipping side of things, because I, I use hard money. And so they want to see all of this, right? They want to they know that they're not just pissing their money into the wind. Of course. So I have to present all of it to them, too. They're not going to take my word for it. They want a licensed person who's going to say, like, okay, this is what I'm going to build it, bill, you know, Prince for doing this work. So this is what you can expect. Gotcha. Nice. Which yeah. is the thing that I actually... Um, I like some of, I, I think there are some guardrails in, in real estate. And I think it's interesting to not rely on them for sure, but to use them in some ways. Like if I bring a deal to my hard money lender and they're like, they have a lot of questions and I'm just like, 
are you sure you want to do this? Then I'm st- I'm starting to think like maybe not. Like I don't think I want to do this. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. Um, but if they look at it and they're like, oh, okay, cool. This is this is gonna be good. Then it helps me to to feel confident. Like okay, someone else who's actually lending me the money who doesn't want this property, they want their money. Yeah. <laughs> um, that they're confident about it. Then it makes me feel like okay, I'm I'm probably good. The same kind of like um, check that I do with my wife, where she's like, okay. If we can move forward, then we're probably good. Yeah. No, so. That's awesome, too, that, like, it's super hard to be, like, self-aware, right? And, like, be okay with saying, like, maybe I'm sometimes, sometimes I'm too hopeful, right? Or, like, something, like, right? Like, that takes a lot, right? Like, so that that's great. Like, a lot of people, right, don't have the capability to be, like, no, I, you know, I'm good. I, I'm level-headed. I don't, you know, I'm not going to shoot for you. Like, no, nah, you know, I like to, you know, dream. And I have people that, you know, hold me down. So that, that's fantastic, like, that you realize that, you know? It's like, I feel yeah. like that's like 98% of the battle, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I actually have another, uh, a story about that, if you have time for that. Bring it, man. Um, so um, in the most recent house that I closed on, that I closed on last week, there was one before that, that you guys were both helping with. I don't remember if you had put input on that. Uh, you're, sure. You were probably like. Uh, <laughs> the multi? Lakeside or something. Yeah. Um, this is on the three family, yeah. Oh, the no. one where you came with me to, and then. Yeah. Where was this one? Tenant. This was in. when uh, you were in Utah. Oh. Well, yeah, it's in it's in uh, Bloomfield. Okay. Yeah, and um, so just like to 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 give the short version, I had a goal. Okay, w- when I set a goal, it's like kind of dangerous because like I'm gonna hit the goal. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I had to be when I say it's dangerous, I had to be careful about the goals that I set for myself. And I, I hindsight made a mistake of making a lag goal of having a three family by the end of last year. And then last year was like fucked up for me because my brother passed away like the year before and I was just like mentally out of it. And so I pushed it into um, the end of the first quarter of this year. And so with all of that, like there was a lot of pressure. I put a lot from nobody else. (laughs) No one else cares. Like it's just uh, the pressure I put on myself to get it done was pushing me into a situation that was not going to be like the best year. Would I have succeeded? Yes. Would I have gotten it done? Yes. Was it like the best use of my time and effort? Probably not. Right. And so, um, so I, I came close to uh, purchasing this house at uh, 76 Ella in, in Bloomfield for six fifty. Three three family needed a, a, a significant amount of work. Um, I like to do uh, an extra bedroom and a two bedroom converted to a three, which was possible, but there was a giant, like this, like half the size of this wall chimney that needed to come out top to bottom. And if you just how we were talking about dumpsters before (laughs) chimneys are super expensive to Mm -hmm. remove. And so, but man, like I, I, so I'm, doing like the brand and strategy of buying these for my, for my kids, at least the first two. Right. And so the first one was for my son, the second one was for my daughter. And so I had on my head, I'm already not even in my head out loud. I'm calling it like Charlotte's house. I'm like, I'm like putting my, my, the timeline. I have to have a, a house by the end of the quarter. I have to this, I have to that. And it was just like, I was pushing myself into a deal that wasn't a, a good deal. That's a little dangerous right there. Super right. Dangerous. You're putting emotional, emotion into the deals like exactly. this is like his house or her house oh that's scary <laughs> <laughs> you're tied to the house no matter what in right. a way right for sure for sure and that's n- i mean i think as investors especially when you're passionate about and, and when you get to touch the product like you guys are at a point where you, you specialize and you don't have to actually touch it in the same ways that that i do right i have to do full you know life cycle um because i'm passionate about it it, it 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 I can fall into that retail mindset where it's just like like even right now even the flip that I'm doing right now where I ordered these door handles right here I'm like do I really want the black ones or do I do, like I like I want the black ones because they're gonna look nice is it gonna add value to gonna me sell selling faster. yeah <laughs> is it gonna help the place sell I don't know and I'm trying to like break myself out of that like but it's gonna look really nice I. No one cares. Is it going to pay me at the end of the day? Am I doing this for free? No. So um, so I got too emotional about that house, and I, I was going to close on it no matter what. And um, and one day I was talking to my business coach, and I was telling him about it, and 
And he's just like, you know what? Let's just like take a step back from this. Just take a step back. Pretend it doesn't even exist, right? What would you do if it weren't there? Like, I'll go look for another house. And then literally while doing that call, like when he said that, I just, it was on a Zoom. I just started looking for other houses. <laughs> he was like, you know, this isn't the only house in the world, right? I was like, oh, yeah, you're right. Literally within 10 minutes, I found a house that I closed on last week. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> And this and the, the lesson for me there and hopefully the lesson people can take away from this is like, yeah, getting emotional, setting lag goals, it can be very dangerous. It can be very dangerous. Like like I mean, especially with real estate investing, right? Like this should be a very numbers game. Exactly. You're looking at it from a very you know, subjective logical point of view, very logical, right? If the numbers work, it works. If it doesn't work, you gotta move on. You keep can't. it moving. Yeah, because once you start mixing emotion in then it's a different game you're playing. You're competing, right? You're, you just don't, you, you, you want to get the house. Exactly. And it messes everything yeah. up. It's not logical. Only the agents win there, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's my, that's my favorite thing to tell all of my team all of the time, right? When, when I take their time and, and we go through vetting a house, I always tell them, at the end of the day, you're getting paid, you're getting paid. You're getting paid. I'm the last guy. Uncle Sam's even getting. I, I'm like, I'm the last. The, whatever scrapes, scraps are left over, that's what I get. So it might look like a good deal to you, but I'm saying no. <laughs> you know? it. yeah. it's, your, it's your risk. It's yeah. you're the one dealing with it. You're the one it. doing it. And it kind of comes back to what me and Ronnie talk about all the time. Like, you're the prize at the end of the day. You're the one that's doing all of this work. You're the one that's changing this house from a old dilapidated crappy house to this beautiful nice three family that people are going to live in or you're going to resell all those other people are just like pieces involved in your vision and i feel like if like your old deal where you were like too emotional about it, it's like you're people are looking for people like you who are out here doing it buying it there's other houses that you'll be able to find mm -hmm. so it's like that mentality of like that you're the prize you're the one that is going to be able to find the best thing for you like numbers wise anything else you know you don't even need to touch yeah yeah, and you only really want to connect with people that are looking out for your best interests, right? Right. You know, you th th there are people that are, they they say it's a good deal, but not for you. It's for them. Right. So like betting That's those true, people yeah. out and not really so trusting true. those. And people. like I guess for those people who can't speak for themselves because they're not <laughs> here, sometimes their intentions, right? Even their intentions can be like this is a good deal for you, mm -hmm. right? Like maybe right, maybe agents aren't the best at right. seeing rentals, but they're great mm -hmm. at seeing ARVs and vice versa, right? So it's important that you know, right? And like you can take the all the feedback, but you need to know at the end of the day, right? Until you find right. that team that you know you could rely on and all that stuff. But well, the the challenging part for me is like um, in balancing out my team. One of the things that I, and one of the things that would be helpful for me is to have that person to be stronger on the no side of things. You know, and I'm, I think my wife has gotten so desensitized to me saying things and like, because at the end of the day, I'm going to get it done. But um, so she's stopped saying no as often as she used to. And that's like scaring the shit out of me because <laughs> I'm like, I need somebody to say no, please say no to me. <laughs> um, but a lot of this, because of that, because everyone else gets paid before me and because of the self-imposed pressure, like I want, like I don't know what you you guys were, you guys were talking about it. I don't remember if it was a past podcast or if it was here in the in the meeting, but um, like it doesn't like there's this itch when you're not like if I didn't have a project at all with nothing in the pipeline, it would feel like like a like a weird like I don't even know how to describe it. It would just feel wrong. Like something's wrong. Mm -hmm. Like I need to get something. And when you feel that too much, I I I. I will start to make bad decisions because I just want anything. I don't care. Like I'm not looking at the numbers objectively anymore. I'm just like, I need to have a deal. I need to do something. Yep. So it's, yeah. it's scary. It's a we, dangerous I mean, game. We, yeah. Like we, especially like as a company, right? Like there is no fallback option for us, right? Like we, like Michael's gonna like give it his all marketing wise to get me and Jagger in the best position to lock it up. And we need to lock it up to feed the, Right, the projects and the rental side, 
And that rental side needs to like play their part because then we're going to refinance Burr style or sell to feed now our like agent Vin. Right. So like, and there's a transaction coordinator now and then tar- like everyone is playing a part and like, and then what happens when like maybe there's no marketing, right? Like how do you stay? Like I am the prize. Like that's why we always say like we're the prize because people can smell desperateness in you, you know? And that's when things start. <laughs> Weird. Yeah. Nah, for, sh- for yeah. sure. It's, but, cra- it's um, crazy. To wrap things up, Prince, yeah. give me, um, I know you have a lot, but if you had to choose one, Give me one reason why you said yes to real estate. Oh, that's easy. Um, I don't do this for me. Like, I don't see myself as, like, maybe I will drive a fancy car one day, you know, <laughs> like my tenant does. Uh, she drives a 740i, like 2022. It's a, it's beautiful. I drive an Alpine. That's the big boy, too. I know. Yeah. I'm so, every time I see it, I'm like, oh, I need to raise the rent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, man, I, I, I do it for my last name. You know, like I do it for my family. I do it for generational wealth. I do it for my kids. I do it for my grandkids. Like I want my great grandkids to be like, you know what? Like there was once like down the line, Christopher and Melissa like they started all this for all of us. Can y'all even imagine what that was like for them? You know, like that just bring, gives me chills. There like I'm going to be dead and gone. I want to have people remembering that I I created a strong foundation for my family. There well it is. And um, if people want to know more about you or find you, where can they do that? Um, I am everywhere. IG, Twitter, Facebook at MCGC Homes. And so it's, uh, Melissa, my wife, mm-hmm. Charlotte, my daughter, Grayson, my son, mm-hmm. and Christopher, myself. So MCGC Homes. All right, cool. Awesome. Well, Prince, thank you so much for letting us in, man. And um, yeah, hope you enjoy your time with us. Like We had a lot of fun. This is great. Yeah, <laughs> no, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, re- I, I, I can't say thank you enough. I, I, I'm so grateful for everything that you guys do. And also for being inspirational, you know, like, I just uh, just listening to the podcast again and hearing that Ryan started a year before me. <laughs> I'm just like, how did you, <laughs> you built all of this in the same amount of time that I've been like doing four deals? <laughs> like, it's amazing. <laughs> so kudos to you guys, man. Right. This is this is amazing. Appreciate it, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, Thanks. man. Thanks, Chris.